keep his body for so long decomposing why they conducted this autopsy because the prison didn't even tell his family he was dead so the prison's like hmm nobody's checking on him he ain't getting no mail nobody's calling the prison to check up on him well we got somebody nobody cares about so we just gonna bury him out there by the wreck yard they buried him on the prison grounds and didn't even tell his family he was dead Welcome to the Criminal Podcast, folks. I'm your host, Moliere Dimash. And um, today, we're going to fill in the loose ends from the Vincent Gaines murder. Um, I look further into that. And uh, that story is about as horrifying as it could get because it's... You know, a a, a lot of people who are worried about when their loved ones go to prison, they fear the worst, okay? Like, they, 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 they think about the safety of their loved ones and they think about what they might be going through or what could possibly happen to them or what the guards may do. And for those of you who have had those worries and, um, especially those of you who have, uh, actually, you know, those worries have manifested, this issue is something that uh, this is like the, the the all of the worries you could possibly worry about is what happened to him. So um, I looked into it, right? And, and, and this is what happened. They starved him to death. Okay. He was starved to death in his room. He died. He lost over 50 pounds from them not feeding him. But that's not the scariest part of this whole thing. So okay uh they they're not feeding the man they don't give him food and after he dies from starvation they leave him in the cell and they count him in there now he's naked in the room they took his clothes from him they they weren't feeding him again it takes a criminal to know one folks i talk about all of this when they take your clothes from you and they leave you in a room with nothing that's called the strip I identified this. I actually had to point to it a few times throughout the book at different uh, different uh, times in the book where, you know, they, they, they did it to me and other people that they did it to. And it, it's, it, it's something that could prepare folks for what could happen to their uh, their loved ones. That uh, uh, that was in chapter anatomy. Read all of the different forms because this is a common practice. I've seen it repeat itself for years and years and years. That's what they do. They put them on strip, right? Then they give them what's called the air trays, another form that I put y'all up on. Um, they, they feed them the air trays until they kill them. He died strictly from starvation, right? So he dies in the cell. The other inmates report it. Uh, they suffer their reprisals for trying to put it out there the whole time. He's dead. Now, this is probably uh, what families worry about the most is will a prison cover up the murder of my husband or my brother or my sister or my uncle or my dad or my mom this is what happened right here so remember uh in one of the past videos i told y'all that uh they did away with boot hill where they was burying the inmates right apparently that ain't the case they stole this man's body. That Now, remember yesterday I was talking about how the autopsy took forever in a day. It's like, man, how in the world? And there was a typo in their report. In their report, they, um, they, they, they misconstrued the dates between 2015, 2000. Regardless, it, it, it still took a very long time from December to June for them to conduct this autopsy. But now we know why. We know why that autopsy was even allowed to continue that long. And this is proof 
that the coroner is in cahoots with the killers at the prison. And remember, this is at Union. This is where uh, they hold the death row inmates. And uh, and apparently they got a CM unit there still. They were supposed to have did away with the CM at, at, at Union. It's still there. So now that's a total. There might even be more. That's a total of four CM units in the state of Florida. You have uh, Charlotte, Swanee, Santa Rosa, and uh, uh, apparently Union because they put him on CM at Union. I didn't even know they could do that, but... Um, they was able to, to to keep his body for so long decomposing while they conducted this autopsy because the prison didn't even tell his family he was dead. So the prison's like, hmm, nobody's checking on him. He ain't getting no mail. Nobody's calling the prison to check up on him. Well, we got somebody nobody cares about. So we just gonna bury him out there by the wreck yard. They buried him on the prison grounds and didn't even tell his family he was dead. Does it get any more frightening than that? They they killed him, they starved him to death, left him in his room without reporting his death for three days. When they found him, there was feces caked underneath his toes and all of that, I guess he, he they probably put him in one of those little rooms with the hole and turned the water off, that's what they do. Like when inmates go to, to the visitation park, and somebody passes them drugs and they swallow the drugs. They put you in a room like that, turn the water off, and if you, you know, use the bathroom, there's a grate that captures everything you do. I've watched officers sit and piece through your crap to find the drugs. Just to, to find a little bit of spice, just to hem you up. That's that that's how re these correctional people, man, they they're they're from another planet. Where the hell do they find these people? I, I do not know, but uh, that's what happened. They starved him to death in that room. They wasn't feeding him until he lost 50 pounds. How long you got to starve a man in America, an American man born healthy? How long you got to starve him before he lose 50 pounds? Then when it finally kills him, you look in there like, yeah, he's dead. And you just keep counting for three days. Then you steal his body. You bury him on the, on the prison grounds and don't even tell his family. The coroner, what on earth was the coroner thinking? Who in the, I gotta find out exactly who that coroner was cause we about to put that one on blast. The coroner kept his body till it was practically, I mean it decomposed to the point where they couldn't even pinpoint the murder. When you know he died of starvation. That's what the coroner did. And and I, like I said, I never heard of an autopsy taking that damn long. And now we know why the autopsy took that long because they knew they had free reign with this body. He's just somebody nobody gives a damn about. We're gonna bury him at the prison anyway and, and nobody's gonna ever know. So I knew this was a mysterious one and, and I really didn't even have to dig that deep because um, I guess Somewhere along the line, the family was like, wow, he ain't been writing. We don't know what's up with him. He's supposed to be out of prison by now. Where is he? They probably went to go pick him up from prison. And they're like, oh, yeah, he died two years ago. Yeah, we, we, we buried him at Boot Hill. Crazy. And, and you know, the, the, the people up in Tallahassee, either there's a severe lack of oversight or they were down with it too. This happened on Rick Scott's watch. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, in insanity at its finest, but that's the, the, the rest of the story with Vincent Gaines. He was uh, starved to death, body was stolen, buried on prison grounds, and there was an autopsy on him until his body decomposed. What was the family supposed to do with that? How, 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 how's a, a family supposed to feel they go to pick up their loved one and his body doesn't ride it out to where there's no point in uh, all we can do is cremate him. Insanity. So um, that's the rest of the story. And, you know, as villainous as these correctional folk are, because I'm not just going to say correctional officers because you got correctional sergeants. Corre you don't go up in rank in the Department of Corrections unless you, like, the biggest 
piece of cheese in the universe. Like the worst of a human, I'm not even gonna say human, the worst of a monster or organism as you are, the higher you go up in rank. So by the time he's a warden, you know he's the worst of the worst. So, um, but these people, as evil as they are, it's so crazy because you would expect them to, to be uh, all the way down with the sickness. So I'm going to leave y'all with this. Uh, Captain James Kirkland. Got to taste his own medicine, folks. He ended up getting arrested. And he was facing 30 years in prison for abusing an inmate. And um, he bonded out of jail knowing that he was going to have to go up the road and, and, and live like he was making other people live. Blowed his brains out. Blowed his brains out. And I had half the mind to, to go to his tombstone and film a segment on him. And I said, no, nah, I ain't going to do it because I'd have been tempted to. Boy, listen, y'all would have seen that, that tombstone in my studio with me. I mean putting out my cigarette butts on it or something like that. But uh, before I, I, I tempted myself to even, before I put myself in a situation where I could be as evil as them, I said, no, nah, don't do it. You know, you a changed man. But at the same time, boy, you can you can invoke them old demons. But uh, to hell with him in the most compassionate way I can say that. But that's what they really made of. These ain't no tough guys. Ain't none of these, they, 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 they're killers when men are vulnerable and defenseless. Aside from that, ain't nothing to them. So, uh, Vincent Gaines, starved to death and uh, body stolen. Our worst fears confirmed. Till next time.